اتمنى بنفسي الابي الابيه وامنيه الحر لقيا المنيه تمنى بنفسي الابي الخليفه هي وداوت وامير المؤمنين cut off his neck right now but again معتصم didn't معتصم now frustrated he came back to his chair and he sat on his chair and now he summoned the strongest of the whippers he hadn't he hadn't whipped imam ahmed yet it was a big man and he was the best of the whippers so he called him forward the man came forward and he said how many whips how many times do you have to whip imam ahmed till he dies how many whips will it take to to kill him so the man said oh, five or 10 or at the most 15 or 20 but not more than that and so the man was given the order by Mu'tasim. Mu'tasim said, go ahead, kill him. And hit him as hard as you can. And the faster you finish this business, the better for all of us. So the man started whipping Imam Ahmed. After about the 14th or the 15th time, finally, the pure blood of Imam Ahmed gushed forth from his shoulders and fell to the ground. As the blood flowed to the ground, the whipper kept on hitting Imam Ahmed. The people were aghast to see the patience of this great scholar, to stay on the haqq, to stay on the truth. They admired his courage. Rahimahullah. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. To such a degree that the police chief of Baghdad at that time, Ishaq ibn Ibrahim, he said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, innahu insanun ta'if al jism. He said, Oh Amir al Mu'mineen, look, this is just a man. He's weak in his body. Because Imam Ahmad was bearing all this whipping despite his weak body. He said, This is just a weak man. Let him go. So the Amir al-Mu'mineen, Mu'tasim, the Khalifa, he said, لَقَدْ سَمِعْتَ قَوْلِي You heard what I said. I swore that I'm not gonna let him go and I'm not gonna stop whipping him until he says what I'm saying. So Ishaq ibn Ibrahim, the police chief of Baghdad, he came up with a plan. He asked the Khalifa, he said, can I just have permission to talk to him just for a second? So the Khalifa said yes. And so Ishaq ibn Ibrahim went to Imam Ahmad. And Imam Ahmad at this point was delirious. He did not know what was going on around him because he was be beaten so silly. And his body was on fire from the whips. He was aching all over. So, Ishaq ibn Ibrahim, he went to Imam Ahmad and he began whispering in his ears and he said, Ya Aba Abdullah. It was one of the names of Imam Ahmad was Abu Abdullah. So he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, oh Abu Abdullah. لَقَدْ تَابَ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَنْ مَقَالَتِهِ وَهُوَ يَقُولْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The Amir al-Mu'mineen, he whispered in his ears. Nobody else could hear except Imam Ahmad. He said that Amir al-Mu'mineen has gone back on what he was saying about the fact that the Qur'an was created. He was lying to Imam Ahmad. He said that the Amir al-Mu'mineen has, has repented from what he has, has been saying. And what he is saying is La ilaha illallah. Imam Ahmad, he only heard the last part. And so Imam Ahmad responded and said, with a lot of exhaustion in his voice, he said, Kalimatul ikhlas. Wa ana aqul, La ilaha illallah. He said, this is, this is the statement of sincerity, of devotion to Allah, and I also say, La ilaha illallah. When Ishaq ibn Ibrahim, the police chief of Baghdad, heard this, he yelled out immediately. He said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, laqad qala kama taqul. Oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, look, he said exactly what you're saying. So Mu'tasim thought that, oh, Imam Ahmed had now gone easy and he had finally relented. So everyone who had stood up, and was watching this entire thing, 
it, within the palace, they all, be, you know, the, uh, the people's voices got really loud because people couldn't believe that Imam Ahmed had now relented and had said, has, had said what the Khalifa wanted him to say and the Khalifa couldn't believe it. And so, so as, as people began, as the voices got louder and louder outside, the, the masses of the Muslims who had crowded out outside, they were also very amazed and they began, they thought something had happened to Imam Ahmed and so they, they also began to make a lot of noise outside. So the Khalifa, he heard the noise outside so he sent some of his messengers to, to his balconies and to see what's going, you know, to look down and see what's going on outside. And so the messengers, they came back to Mu'tasim. And they said, look, there's pandemonium outside. The people are swearing that they're going to kill you. And, I'm, and we're warning you that you, I, we feel that you should send Imam Ahmed in front of them so the people calm down. So the Khalifa Mu'tasim, he, he became very afraid. And, he's, and he told the people, Al-Bisu, you know, put his clothes back on and take him out there in front of the people. So... They took him out in front of the people, and the people calmed down. And the people they began they began saying, "Ma qulta ya Abu Abdullah hatta naqul." Oh Abu Abdullah, talk to Imam Ahmed. Oh Imam Ahmed, what did you say so we can say the same thing? Imam Ahmed waited till the whole crowd outside. There were thousands of people outside. He waited till everybody quieted down, and he said. مَا عَسَىٰ أَنْ أَقُولُ What else should I say? He said, all of you reporters who are here, pay attention. And all of you masses of Muslims, bear witness to what I'm about to say. أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقِ مِنْهُ بَدَأْ وَإِلَيْهِ يَعُودِ He said that the Qur'an is the word of Allah, is the speech of Allah. And it's not created, and it started from him, and it returned to him. Needless to say, the people were happy that Imam Ahmed has still not budged. He was as strong as ever. But the Khalifa was livid. He was very upset. So he ordered that Imam Ahmed be brought back in. And they brought Imam Ahmed back in. And they closed the doors. And the Khalifa ordered that they start whipping and they tie him up and they start whipping him. And, and, and so, so the guards, they, before they even tied him up, they started punching him and beating him and hitting him with sticks and kicking him. And Imam Ahmed fell unconscious. Again. Because of the intense amount of beating. So they threw water on him to bring him back. And so when he came to again, when he regained his consciousness, after beating him for, for many hours, they decided that they were finished for the day. And so the Khalifa ordered that they bring him this really sweet date drink. It was a sweet drink that was you know, full of dates and so on. It was, uh, it was a delicacy at that time. So they brought, Imam Ahmed was on the ground, panting, and hurting, and bleeding. And they bring this date drink in front of Imam Ahmed. And you know what Imam Ahmed says? Wallahi la uftir, inni sa'im. He says, I swear by Allah, I'm not going to break my fast, I'm fasting. Imam Ahmad, you were fasting? Wasn't it hot? Wasn't it difficult? Didn't you have a headache? Oh, you had more than a headache, right? But you're still fasting? You didn't make any excuses? Oh, Allah will forgive. Allah is merciful. Allah is compassionate. No, you didn't make any of those excuses. You're still fasting. After all the beatings and being unconscious and your body bleeding and being whipped and whipped and whipped and whipped, you're still fasting. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه يغفر لكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters معتصم later on that night the Khalifa sent a doctor to the jail cell of Imam Ahmed and the doctor says والله لقد رأيت he said that I swear by Allah that I've seen people that who were whipped 